part of the uh, challenge that the amateur astronomy community is facing is to bring in more people into the hobby. So it, we've been actively trying to contact different people, science communicators, people with influence or also interested in astronomy to help them help us popularize the hobby. I think it's very, very important for all of us to do that because as a hobby, we want to make sure that it's growing. And one way to do it is reach out to younger people, make sure that the next generation, the younger people, are actually getting into the hobby. Basically, I look at it now and I think of uh, astronomy as more of a really artistic uh, you look at all the beautiful pictures that they do, and I, and I think that's going to bring more people in. It's, it's like getting the big buck for the hunters. You want to get the, the, the most beautiful picture that you can get, and it's, it's kind of a competition, really, um, something that can be achieved, and you don't have to have physical strength. You don't have to have all these different things, but you can go in and just be able to have that creative spark and eye and go out there and, and, and work with it. I guess what I do is I have a small group of friends um, near my home, and if I have a night where I decide to take out the telescope, I'll invite them along. It's not really their hobby, but it's nice to branch that out. But I would like to do some outreach to some high schools or elementary and get the kids interested early so that it's not something you're starting when you're 20s or 30s. It's something you start early on and you just get that for your whole life. Already we can see that the impact of social media has popularized astronomy a great deal amongst people who just uh, have, no, have no real direct interest in astronomy, but they get excited about these things, like this eclipse that just occurred, had one of the largest turnouts that have ever occurred for a solar eclipse. And I think it's 100% due to social media and the, the news coverage that it gets. So I think that is making it more important. In other words, you can reach people much easier now than you ever could before. I think the, uh, the general public it is more into you know the the now results you know so a lot of people like to share things you know, I find that people like sharing they want to see results they want to, to make things easy so I, I I see a expansion into just easy imaging and sharing there's a lot of people now doing science not just astrophotography anymore there's a lot of people doing science there's a lot of citizen science and their schools that are um, doing science. The easier we make the telescopes, the um, more science that the schools can start doing. We get colleges doing science and maybe even down to high schools doing some science projects with NFS grants and such. So because um, the capabilities of the telescopes today are so much more, I think the way to get the young people involved is to get them using them in schools. On the scientific point of view, astronomy is, is trying to answer very fundamental questions. And most of them have to do with uh, cosmology, meaning where, where does uh, the universe come from? And there, there are still many, many questions. Most of them I won't answer. The other search, I think, in astronomy is searching for other planets, other intelligent intelligent civilizations or even sign of life, simply sign of life on other planets. I think that's the second quest. Uh, the first, I believe, the first should be trying to find out, answering the question, the, the big question of cosmology today. Um, I think there's a renewed interest in astronomy. Um, you know, it really peaked um, for our generation or the generation slightly before us with the, the moon landing and the Apollo program. And then we had the space shuttle, but with the, the, you know, the, the cessation of flying the space shuttle, people predicted that there would be less interest in astronomy. But you know, as Cassini and some of the other probes have demonstrated, um, a lot of interest is generated because we're getting looks at our solar system with um, the, you know, the technology that has been put into these probes that we were never able to get before. And um, I know that the generation, my, my children's generation, um, has a lot of interest in these types of things, and I think that interest will continue. And those are the you know, future astronomers and uh, future amateur astronomers um, that, that are coming out of that. So I think what you're going to see and what you're already seeing is that amateur astronomy is making significant strides uh, in the professional realm. You've got uh, you know, amateur astronomers finding comets and asteroids and near-Earth objects 
Uh, and I think that's just going to continue to happen. I see uh, a network of astronomers, maybe maybe a network of satellite uh, imagers. You know, if you can turn households into a, a satellite spot, and suddenly you've got a a satellite uh, telescope that's the size of a hemisphere. You know, just because amateur astronomers are working together, I see that happening. I see the entire community coming together and doing more. In terms of making astronomy uh, something that it can reach a much broader audience, um, you know, we want to see more development of that, those accessibility options via the internet and ease of use. To try to make it a simple process. Using your iPhone is a pretty easy thing to do. And it'd be great if we can get to where people can access these high-end telescopes and take these terrific images and also do research. If you think about the science projects we did when we were young, uh, you know, in some respects pretty primitive what kids can do today. You know, one of the most successful programs that I've seen for engaging younger students and younger kids in astronomy is um, the, the Sonoma County Astronomical Society has a program where they have students, little kids, like write essays and then they, they take the best essays on astronomy and they give them telescopes. And these kids, it, I've been surprised, it's mostly girls. These kids, they, they get these, te these telescopes, they bring them to star parties and they become little experts, little am amateur astronomy experts. And they give public talks and presentations and this is one of the most successful places. I'm a member of about five different astronomy clubs and this is a great way to bring in a younger generation and help them maintain it because we've seen over years now these kids come in and they, they stay in there. And, but this is a kind of program I think we need to scale it, we need to use it as an example and do it elsewhere. Just sort of one small example of one thing we can do. We live in a, in a fast age, right, where our, our, our movies and our music, our media, you know, fast edits, instant gratification, loud and, and in-your-face kind of stuff is required to hold people's attention today for a half a second, which is sad. And so the subtle and the esoteric stuff suffers I think it's very difficult to get a lot of uh, younger people into this as a hobby. It seems like there's more younger folks, even women, who manage to get into the professional sciences, astronomy, cosmology, whatever it is, but in the amateur way, getting them to a telescope, getting them to a dark sky, uh, inspiring that wonder in them, is, is difficult, I think. Giving someone the opportunity to not only see it for themselves, but do it for themselves um, and say, here, you know, have a look. If, for example, if they have the privilege of looking through a telescope and seeing the rings of Saturn, give someone that opportunity to, to do that and see it with them, for themselves with their own eye. It has an incredibly powerful impact. And what I'll find, and for those who, like I say, there are many outlets where you have an opportunity, uh, city star parties, outreach events. Once you see it for yourself, it's, it's like a catalyst that the, the rest starts to take care of itself. The interest will be there. One of the things that concerns me greatly is the fact that so many people are moving away from science and from facts. The fact of the matter is math, history, science, and facts matter. And so to advocate that and to advocate education, I mean, I believe that college education should be absolutely free. We should be investing in the brain trust of this country. And so to me, our job is to advocate science. Our job is to inspire people to really embrace uh, what is right. The stars are for everybody. And I would like, that if, if I could do that, if I could spread the interest out amongst everybody, that would be the biggest contribution I could make.